Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of DadCast. I'm your host, JP, with my co-host, the man, the myth, the legend, Nick Martin. Hey, what's going on, man? I was thinking about doing a crazy stupid intro like I always do. Last year, like Mr. Big Head or something. That's right. But I just let it alone it that time. Little Mr. Little Penis. It can, we oh, we like, really? We We're not 30 <laughs> seconds in, man. Well, I, I figured we got to lay off Bigfoot. We could jump on small dicks for a little bit. No, let's 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 not. Let's, not let's lay, lay off the small dicks and the small penises. Okay. Let's just get off dicks. Period. Personally, I don't want to jump on any dick. <laughs> Either do I. <laughs> All right. We are. You like how this one's going, special guest? I like it. All right. Well, and we, 30 seconds in, we've gone off the rails. Well, I, I completely 100% blame you, Nick Martin, on my that bad. one. My bad. Uh, with us today is a very, 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 very special guest. Emmy Award winning movie star, TV star, former policeman, fireman, and one hell of a good looking man, Jerome Hamilton. How are you, sir? If I was any better. JP, I'd be twins. I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing, man. It is good to have you here. We can't wait to have a chit chat with you and talk about all things life and what is Jerome Hamilton. Yeah. Absolutely my honor and pleasure to be here. Oh, man, we appreciate we are it. so stoked on this one. Oh, yeah, we've been looking forward to it. Um, of course, real quick, big old thanks to um, many of our sponsors uh, uh, right here, right here. Show it to the camera right up there. Who is that, Nick? Who we, we got, got? Boneyard Elixir. So if you guys are into CBD infused beverages, these guys make the best. Um, hit them up, boneyardelixir.com. They'll deliver right to your door. Yeah, absolutely. Um, our brand new, we found out earlier this week, sponsor, Red Robin Gourmet Burgers. I actually went in there uh, last on the first day of on Friday. You got to sit down in a restaurant. Yeah, sit finally. down yeah. and eat. And uh, they hooked us up. It was amazing as usual. The kids loved it. So Red Robin, you guys are amazing. Thank you so very much. Wow. So, Jerome. Yes, sir. <laughs> what is it like being an Emmy Award winner, man? You know, I'm just a normal guy. Got lucky. Yeah? That's all I can tell you. It's, uh, you know, it hasn't really changed my life much. Well, it would change my life. Do you know why? Because I would be absolutely, uh, what's the word, flexing everywhere I go. That's right. I'd be doing Facebook Live videos with my Emmy. I'd yeah, take a shower guy, with cause, it. Because I'm that guy. I actually <laughs> thought about bringing it here for you. Yeah, you were supposed to. I told Nick to tell I, you. I, Apparently, I, I honestly forgot that. I would have brought it. <laughs> My bad. You were actually supposed to come in. Well, not supposed to. We talked about, right. uh, gosh, well over a year ago after the yeah. couple concerts we have of you coming in the radio show and bringing that Emmy when it was fresh, when you right. just had it. Right. And uh, here I am. I'm going to have to wait again. Maybe I'll just have to come out to uh, the uh, the Hamilton abode, check out all your cars and stuff. Come on out and check it out. Oh, it's good stuff, man. Yeah. Uh, so you're a fireman right now. Yes. Now, is that a full-time gig or is it a... Uh, like a volunteer type deal? I'm a, a volunteer 24-7, so I'm on call 24-7. And for a small town, uh, Wolf Creek, Yeah. Um, the chief out there is a really nice guy and needs the help. So I decided because my life is pretty cool <laughs> and I have the time, why not give back? So um, I kind of picked a town that needed the help. Right. I don't live in Wolf Creek, but <clears throat> picked a town that needed the help. And uh, it's been very rewarding. I, I've already made lieutenant, man. It's just crazy. Wow. And, yeah. Yeah, it's you know it's volunteer. But we do everything that the paid the paid guys do. Right, exactly the same training, everything. So really, the only difference is we don't take home a paycheck. Yeah, well that that's but you know it's rewarding it's like rewarding. you said. That's Absolutely, why I'm, doing, I'm not doing it for the money. Any uh, any crazy stories that uh, have happened in your time there yet? Well, we had a guy yesterday about 80 years old cleaning a firearm, and I think he shot himself in the knee and it went through <laughs> oh. his hand. Wow. But, okay. Uh, Ouch. Yeah, that doesn't tickle very yeah, much. Our, no. our our district is mainly covers a lot of the five freeways, so we do a lot of traffic accidents, lots of them. Right, you know, up there in um, the top of the Cascade Mountain Range. Yep. So, I'm, I think we had four rollovers in the same turn in one day. I mean, it gets it's gnarly. People don't slow down through there; they need to. Wow, that's <laughs> yeah. I'm that's sure crazy. you see some unfun things. Yeah, you know what? Somebody's got to do it, and. <clears throat> I just like to, honestly, I just really like to help people. It's just my thing. You know what else I think you like to help? What's that? Bench presses. <laughs> Weights. I still haven't been to the gym in, in a long, long time. Oh, man, oh, if wait, you. Wait, wait. If you look, you look like a G.I. Joe. How have you not? Dude, you literally G. not look like a G.I. Joe. Like, you look like the G.I. Joe. I wish I had his money. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, you know, obviously this is going to be on uh, on YouTube. 
What's up, you two? What's hey, y'all. Up? What's up? Um, but for those listening to audio, and if you don't have a, a access to a phone or a computer, which is just weird because how would you be listening to this to begin with? But if you choose you don't want to see the visual version of this, let me just tell you, this man is well over six feet tall. He's ripped. And you look like a 25 year old man. Yeah, but I'm old. Yeah, but you're definitely not a 25 year old man. Yeah, I feel every bit of my 60 years. He's 60 years old (laughs) and a silver fox. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm just throwing out you're a good looking man. How come I'm single then? Well, there we, we can delve into that a little bit later yeah. in the show. <laughs> yeah. There may be some deep seated psychological issues going on with must you, be. Jerome. I, I don't know. Must, we'll, must be. <laughs> we may have to find out. I, you know, I've seen, I've stalked your Facebook profile over the last couple of years since yeah. we first met. Yeah. You haven't been single that entire time. Oh, no. I no. think it's poor choices. My, my problem is poor choice. Uh, and for, high standards. The one person. Yeah, yeah you know, I'm not going to settle. And, you know, I do have high standards. Uh, I like to be treated the way I treat people. Fair enough. I, I want to be respected. I don't want to be lied to. And um, first of all, I can't do long distance dating. And that was what that was all about right. last year. She, you know, yeah. she lived in Wyoming and it's just too far. And so there you have it. So it's just me and my dog that I rescued. Oh, well, that's not a bad relationship right there. No, it's pretty good. Now, yeah. ladies, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I mean, you, you, you see what? Drone, yeah. peek over and look <laughs> at that camera right there. All right, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, there you go. Ladies, if you are anywhere in the range of 18 to 60. No. No, no, no I'm no. just kidding. <laughs> you know, honest, honestly, 18 my, to 25. My, my, my wife of 17 years uh-huh. is 14 years younger than me. Yep. So I'm used to ladies at this point in their 40s and, and, and early 50s. Okay. It just depends on how well they take care of themselves. And that you know, I'm, I'm not that superficial, but... Looks are important to me. Of course. And and there's actually, Nick, I don't know if you've heard about this, there's an actual mathematical equation to figure out the exact age that you are looking for. And I will dish that upon you okay. right now. So you take your age. Yeah. Okay. In this case, you said 60. Yeah. Divide it in half. 30. Yeah. And then you add seven years. Perfect. That's 37 year old woman is who you are looking for. I think it's a little young. Well, but see, the greatest thing about this equation is the older you get, the younger it plays out for the for you. Right. So, well, the other thing I like is somebody that's been there, done that. <laughs> so if she's 37 and been through it all already and just wants to chill and travel and have fun and enjoy a nice guy, there you go. I'm your guy. Yes. All right. All right. Uh, Nick? Let's jump into You have kids. You I have do. grandkids that are, you, I do. you show I've all got these n- awesome I've got pictures. nine grandchildren. Oh, I've wow. got uh, five children. Okay. And... Man, you know, what a blessing. That yeah. is the biggest blessing in my life. It, yeah, it's, it's just amazing to me. I became a dad when I was 17 years old, so it has not been easy. Me too. I've, <laughs> you know, yeah. so, I mean, I, I, I've, I've come along, you know, kind of a rough journey. I dropped out of high school to become a dad wow. and <clears throat> lived in a car for co- quite a long time till I mm-hmm. got a job and, you know, right. I lived in a Ford Pinto of all things. So, my I, sister had, both my sisters had Ford Pintos. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I mean, it hasn't been a... <clears throat> Um, an easy journey, but to, I, I guess I really wouldn't change anything, even the painful moments, if it changed me being sitting here right now. You know, to be honest with you, you change one millisecond of your life and right. nothing's the same. Yeah, right. you never know. I mean, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't trade anything for the health of my children or grandchildren. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm very lucky. So I, I may not have been paying attention just there. In fact, there's a strong possibility that I was not paying attention. We're not even drinking this. Because not only am I, you know, a host, I'm also a producer, I'm also a board (laughs) operator, and I'm also IT and camera operator these days. Nick, you better get up with that. Um, Did you say how many kids you had, Jerome? I have five. Five total? And how many grandkids? Nine. Nine. So the man's rocking a 14, a number 14. Yeah. It's amazing, man. Congratulations. Hey, you know, God is good. That's all I can tell you. Thank you. That deserves some applause right there. So, what you're 17? Yep. And how old is your youngest grandchild? My youngest. Well, the funny part is my oldest child, who is going to be 44. Okay. My daughter. <laughs> she has the oldest and the youngest. So I have a 21 year old granddaughter, uh-huh. which is insane for me. And then I have a uh, writer. I believe is now three. Oh. And she yeah, has, runs the whole gamut. Yeah. So we've got them everywhere in between too. It's amazing, They're man. good kids. They're good kids. And my kids are good kids. So, you know, I'm very fortunate that my grandkids are being raised right. Well, you know, they had, you had to do, you played a big part in that. You know, if the grandkids are raised right, the parents were raised right, in my opinion. Exactly. Yeah. Well, like I said, it wasn't an easy road. Uh, is it ever? 
I don't think so. I, I if mean, it was easy, <laughs> everybody would be doing it, right? <laughs> well, I think yeah. everyone is doing yeah, that. I think but right. I think we're right. in Southern Oregon, so yeah. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm surprised I don't have any COVID babies, honestly, oh, through the through 2020. No, right. Kidding. Well, there's probably going to be a serious influx of them if it isn't already happening as we speak. Uh, uh, right? I, I agree. You, you need to get into uh, medical profession where you deliver babies. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Nick. Wow. So, man, how is this last week for you? Good. Good. Just uh, I see you've been hustling. Hustling hard. Man. Big time. Yes. Oh. I've never known Nick to not you got, hustle. You know, six kids. They're getting the, the little guy is getting bigger. He eats. I don't even know how he eats so much, but it's <laughs> fucking ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> is yeah, is so. uh, is mom breastfeeding or is it formula? No, no, it's it's formula. Okay, so we're uh, so we get you know we get the normal amount of formula. Then we have to get like three extra big tubs of forty dollar tubs of formula. So yeah, I got to hustle. That's a you know extra hundred twenty bucks a month. It is. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing you're getting all those sponsors lined up for That's us, right. man. Yeah. Let's, let's get a formula sponsor for you. Nick. I, there we go. Uh, hey, yeah. Dadcast. Dad Why not? Come right. on now. Yeah. I, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. You know. How, what do you? How's what do you, your week been? Oh, it's good. Hi, this is Avery. <laughs> Thanks for listening to my dad on Dadcast. Oh, thank you, baby. I appreciate that. That was my daughter. You know, thanking everyone out there. Uh, my week. Um, Oh, it, it, they're all blur, man. They're, it's all a big blur for me. Uh, you know, this isn't the only thing I do. I've got, you know, the radio station. I've got a couple of other jobs. So I'm just hustle, hustle, hustle day in, day out. But this last week, my kids went back to school, like legitimately full time in school for the nice. first time in a year. And today, as a matter of fact, both of them went back at the same time. Awesome. So they are literally in school right now as we are speaking. And uh, I love it because yeah. it, it affords me, and more importantly, it affords mom a little bit of that comfy quiet that we haven't experienced in over a year at home. Exactly. But, JP, and, be honest here. Yes. When you and your wife go places, uh huh, all you do is talk about your children. Yeah, and we miss them. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yes. We complain so. <laughs> when they're – but, in fact, we're, we're actually going somewhere uh, in a couple of weeks, and I'm already missing them. Right. Yeah. Just, and even though yeah. I look forward it's, – it's, it's literally at the same time. Yeah. I cannot wait to get some time away, but I already miss them. Yeah, right? I, it's, I've done that. I've it's there. it's yes. ridiculous. Yeah. But I think uh, – Little mom and little mom and dad time is is a really good healthy thing. Oh, absolutely necessary. We're gonna eat tacos and maybe get matching tattoos. Right you on. Should, it's not maybe you taco should just do tattoo. It. I, probably. Yeah. Yes. If yeah. you knew the whole story behind all this. Okay. Okay. You want to hear the story? Uh, absolutely. Everyone want to hear the story? Yes. Yeah. So Valentine's Day rolled around, and if you are not aware, um, people listening of the podcast know my lady has been through a shit year. Okay, and uh, I don't know if you're aware, Jerome, but uh, she had a hysterectomy, full hysterectomy, about six, seven months ago, which uh, was a preventative measure. Mm -hmm. But uh, and then a month ago, she went through a uh, double mastectomy because of breast oh, cancer. God. So she psychologically is having some. It's tough. I mean, can you imagine you know, everything that makes you a woman gone? My 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 mother mm -hmm. is one of the first ten people in the world to have a bilateral mastectomy. Uh huh. In the '60s, and they didn't, you know, used to remove breasts and that type. She had breast cancer, right? And uh, at that point, it was so new they even put the implants in backwards. It was crazy. Wow, she went through. So it's, you know, it's come a long ways, but it is very hard on a woman mentally. My mother ended up in a mental institution. Wow. Well, I don't think Jen's doing good. <clears throat> good. My lady is doing good. I mean, she's strong. And, and if she, Prayer. if there are any signs of. Uh, she isn't. She doesn't show it, which is great. So, you know, okay, back back to the point. So I knew all of this was going down, and I actually have a trip to go to. I have to go to where we're going for work. It's a pirate radio thing. Every single year, we I have a remote a broadcast to do uh, in the boating industry because pirate radio, sailors, yada, yada, yada. <clears throat> and anyway, this was booked months and months ago. Had to recancel and redo it, but... Uh, Paid for completely by Pirate Radio, which is amazing. Nice. Uh, we're going to South Florida. Awesome. Again, to eat fish tacos. And I was going to plan it on Valentine's Day, but she had just had the surgery. So I pushed it off a little bit, and that is her gift. So we got a B and b We got a Turo, and we've got, what else? The flight. Awesome. That's All handled, so paid good. for, and thankfully, because right now, you know, money ain't, ain't exactly falling <laughs> off the friggin' trees. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we got to do that. 
And like you mentioned, taco tattoos. I actually literally said that to her. We only want to go there for the fish tacos. I'm not even kidding. They have, they, awesome. have, they have the fre- best mahi-mahi fish tacos right in the history of the world, and they're everywhere, and oh. there's one place. But anyway, so I said we should get matching tattoos, and it might just be a fish taco. You, you should. Yeah. You, you definitely should. We're, right I mean, right so next we're to the Red Robin. Red Robin tattoos. Yes. So. <laughs> yeah, that's what, awesome. Yeah. In last week's podcast, I said if Red Robin sponsored us, and I was joking for the record, uh, we'd get I'd get a, a Red Robin logo tattooed somewhere on my body. And two days later, they sponsored us, and so we're so. And I, but I don't have a problem. Yeah. I'm going to get a Red Robin I'm, tattoo, I'm and it's going it to be just neck. fine. Yeah, so, awesome. When I walk into Red Robin, I'm getting that free food. <laughs> and I want to give a shout out to Jen Godfrey. She's going to hook us up. Is so. she going to come in and do it live on the podcast? I'll, I'll talk to her and see if she'll do it. I, I don't know how COVID and, and illegal that is. Wink, um, wink, nudge, nudge. But yeah. I don't. It's. I mean, it's kind of sanitary. I mean, I can hold the fort down. I mean, we're talking small tattoos. It won't take that long. Yeah, well, yeah. I or mean, maybe she could start it during. Yeah. yeah or, we'll see. or we could film down there, do the podcast at her place. Oh, that might work. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Yeah. yeah. We, we've got. We have the power. We have the capability. We do. Thank you, Roadcaster Pro. Yeah. <laughs> Man, it'd be cool if we sponsored by Roadcaster Pro. Exactly. All right, Jerome. So I, I am absolutely just. I'm intrigued. By you and your career in in, in in the you know in the SAG world, the Screen Actors Guild, TV sh- he said hundreds of movies, yeah, uh, hundreds music of TV videos. shows, music videos. You've hung out with the rock stars, etc. It you go off the impression as like yeah, whatever, very humble guy. You know, um, I'm no better than the next guy. And to no, be very honest, absolutely, with you, and that's how I feel about it. And there's a reason I don't live in Los Angeles where I could be working constantly. What is that um, reason? The type of people in that industry. Oh man, I grew up in Southern California, so man. Did I. I, I, we, I, I know. It's so, so I mean, they're way full of themselves, and you know, it's always a competition against somebody with a trust fund. Uh, there's just so many different things, and they expect you to wait on them hand and foot. I mean, I have A-list buddies that might tell me when I'm at their house in Holly Mansion in Hollywood Hills, "Hey, go grab me a beer." I'll tell them, "Get off your ass and go out, grab your own <laughs> fucking beer, man." And that's right. what I do, and they respect me for that yeah. because I'm not going to kiss their ass, right? Nice. I'll never treat them like they're better than me, and I don't like it when people treat me like I'm something special because I'm really not. I'm just a normal guy following the path God's got me on. You know, that's really all. I find that uh, you are guilty until proven innocent down there. Yeah, no doubt. Right, and uh, well, that's cool. That's that's I, I and that, that that deserves some of that right there. <laughs> Another applause. Um, well, regardless, we're still going to talk about it. Oh, well, I'm good. Best, most favorite experience you've had in a show. What, bottom line, what's, the, what's your favorite TV show or movie you've ever done? And tell us about the experience and why. <laughs> well, I've done a lot. Um, I actually liked my small part in, um, uh, see, I, I have a hard time remembering me and what I've been in. I've been in so many. There was a, <laughs> um, Purge, Purge Anarchy was a lot of fun. For okay. Me. Oh, and I got to be a murderer. And, you know, I got to be one of the, I got to be a billionaire. <laughs> Nice. And I had a smoking hot chick for a wife. Right. And we were part of the hunting party. We went out and hunted people when you're allowed to hunt people for that 24-hour period. And it was quite fun. And I, I made some good friends on that set. Purge yep. Anarchy. Was that go first, second, or third? That was number two. Number two? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to have to go back and rewatch that now. Yeah. Just a very small scene. They cut my scene way back like usual. Uh-huh. I, I got <laughs> to the point where I don't tell people I'm in movies anymore because I don't. you never know if I actually made the cut. Right. <laughs> it just is what it is. <clears throat> but... That was an awful fun one. Music videos are an awful lot of fun for me. Yeah. Because I can act as stupid. I do a lot of parody music videos. Okay. With people that have 10 million followers. Uh-huh. And big time deal. And I mean, I have some music videos I've done that have a, oh, 700 million views. Wow. Think about that on YouTube. That's crazy. 700 million views. Yeah, man. I, if I just had a million views, I think I would be the best thing. And we'll get there one day, man. Well, but these guys make, I guess these YouTube stars guys make, they, you know, they, they make pretty good money. Oh, mm-hmm. absolutely. And, and um, you know, I was asked to go into a lot of, a lot more YouTube videos with one particular guy. His name is Bart Baker, and he's a real famous YouTube star. Mm-hmm. And Bart used to have me in a lot of his videos. We just had a good chemistry, and I was kind of fearless, so I'd do whatever they asked me to. <laughs> but once I got my job on the court television show that I'm on, yes. I had to be a little more, um, a little less, uh, how do you say it? I had, had, had to be more professional. Yeah, you, you, had, to, you had to pull in the reins yeah, just a bit, yeah. didn't Cause you? Because I, I really am the other guy <laughs> in the nutcase, you know. But, Paternity court. Tell us yeah. about that. 
You know, we're going into our eighth season. Uh-huh. And um, that's what you won the Emmy for, correct? Yeah, yeah, 2019, I won an Emmy as co-host. Co-host. And I'm the bailiff, and I've been with the show since the inception, since it was the pilot and the sizzle reel. Other than the time when I injured myself and had to, I had to, to sit out half a season and have somebody fill in for me. But I'm, I'm still the guy. And it, it's you know, the thing is, there's no acting involved. So when I worked for Josephine County Sheriff's Office, uh, I did did work in the courts quite a bit, uh-huh. and so I was I was the right guy for this job. <clears throat> it's it when when you talk about like we did family court here a lot in Josephine County, pretty intense, pretty you know it's kind of one of the more dangerous courts where people are going to want to you know throw blows. But if you take it to a paternity issue, right, where the the paternity of a child's in question. It escalates. So what I want to say is on our show, no actors, period. I mean, I physically remove people from the courtroom very often. It's, it's an emotional. I mean, it's, just me thinking about the idea of being in something like that in a scenario. Thank oh, God I, I'm I not. have been. Yeah. Yeah. I have been. So I was the perfect guy for the show because <laughs> I've been through what these guys have been through. They look at me the way I look, but they don't realize the way I look. Inside that, the way I look, there's this this human being that's been through a lot in his own life and I can totally relate to them. I'm not just this big bailiff guy that's a TV star or whatever they want to call me. Uh, I'm actually a person that's been there, done that. So I think the biggest reason I have a a fan base is because of how kind I am to the litigants. And, you know, I, I try to, I try to counsel them. And, you know, the only thing I can tell you, if you have a paternity question, the best thing that can happen is, you know, the truth. Absolutely. Yeah. So no I, mean, I never there. knew my biological father. Yep. So, I mean, I knew who he was, but he never bothered to be my dad. So um, I hadn't seen him since I was three years old and he's already deceased. That's, that's a big void. Absolutely. You know, you don't, <laughs> what I, do you do? <laughs> I can't personally begin to even think I know how that is. Cause I mean, I was, I'm lucky. I, I, my dad was there. Amen. And, and you know, until the day he passed away. Yep. And because of that, you know, the foundation was set upon me for my children. Right. At least I like to think. And I know right. many times that th- that's not the case. Yeah. No, but it's, uh, it's, I'm there for my kids, man. Mm-hmm. No, no matter what. You, you know, know, your kids, have, your kids have to be, yeah, amen. Me yeah. too. You know, I, I put it this way. Um, it's hard to say there's anything above my children, but you do have God. <laughs> and um, so pretty much God first, uh, children second, grandchildren along with the children. And, you know. I'd give my life for anybody in my family. I'd give my life for my friends. I really, it is what it is. You so, know? so God, family. Now, we might get controversial here, but does Trump come third? Uh, I like Trump. <laughs> <laughs> I know you do, my friend. Yeah, and yeah. we can talk about that if you'd like, or we can, we can completely it. skip it over. We can talk about it. Um, what I, do you, how do you feel about that, Nick? I'm good. We, I, we, might, we yeah. might seriously turn off a whole lot of people well, if we go this route. But you know what? It's our show. It's our, right. it, it, okay. If at this point, if you don't like politics, so here's here's the thing. We we the bye bye probably all have different beliefs too, right? Like, and that's that's a great thing about America. Yeah, like, we love is my friends. religion. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I, I let me back up. Do I like Trump? Not really. Do I like Trump? Do I like what he the direction he had our country going in? I did. Did I actually? As vote, did, did I? Did I vote for Trump when he was running against Hillary? I didn't vote because I didn't like either one of them. Exactly. Honest truth. So Trump had to prove himself to me, and, and he did. And the thing I liked and respected the most about Trump is he is not a politician. Mm-hmm. That's he, exactly. He's a businessman, and that's right. what that, that's what works for me. Yeah, there's some really horrible things that guy said, and but who hasn't? He just you know he's fil- yeah. he's un- he's unfiltered like me. Real. I love it. He's real. Mm-hmm. He's real. He he really is a true patriotic american did you happen to catch the uh the cpac his speech yesterday I, the day I, before i saw a little bit on the news but not much all right to, to sum it up in a nutshell he didn't say he was but he sure <laughs> as shit didn't say he wasn't and he left it open i think we're gonna see trump 2024 yeah, well, well for, he's gonna run it's a good yeah. possibility 45 is 27 that's exactly i mean 45 is gonna be 47 yeah no. You get that? Who, yeah, I he's know exactly 40, what it is. He was the 45th, and he's going to be the 47th. Number, number 47. Unless he, he, could, he could end up being 48 if, you know, Biden somehow. <laughs> and I could set myself up for a whole bunch of bad, yeah. bad scenario there. But if Biden is no longer in office, then Kamala is going to take over. Right. So 
45 could I, become 48, I, I, just saying. My whole thing is that I really care about our country, and I, carry, I'm, I'm a, I have a really high standard of ethics, and I believe that we all follow the same rules, no matter if you're the president or you're the pauper, mm. man. It don't That's matter. Right. You, yeah. you follow the same laws, and there's nobody above the law, and it doesn't matter who you are. So if we all follow the same rules, we don't turn the rules in our favor and keep them the other way for the other person. So we have the edge. It's not right. And that's what I see a lot about a lot of politicians is they'll talk the talk, but they won't walk the walk. Mm-hmm. Right. It, it, my single biggest, I, I don't want to say fear, but it is, is the division. Amen. That this, all of this, right. whether you're pro or anti anybody, there was a time in this country where that was, it's okay. You know, you don't have to like my guy. Yeah. But guess what? Good stuff. My guy <laughs> is going to end up being that. Or you know what? Your guy or girl is going to be. Right. And and that's that. Okay. So let's get together to healing and doing the best we can for everybody. Exactly. And, We're and not I don't get know anywhere what the hell has happened, other, right? but that's... It, it has definitely happened in our lifetimes. It has happened in my first presidential election that I could vote in was Clinton Perot. Wow. <laughs> so 1992, wow. I think. Yeah. Um, you know, I was 18 then. I could, I could vote. But even going back to then, this wasn't the case. Yes, there's all, you know, right. I don't like Clinton. I don't like Pro. I don't like whatever. I don't like politicians. Yeah. I'm not a big fan either. But this whole division, this whole anger. Can I tell you where I that saw that set. first happen? What? And I am the furthest thing from a guy that even looks at anybody's skin color. So don't take it that direction. Where I saw the most division was with Obama, to be honest with you. That's where I saw it coming. And, you know, I was happy he, we had a black president. That's, that's what I was amazing. leading up yeah. to, by you the know, record. But. Yes, but I just, that's where I started seeing the massive division. And it was kind of horrible. But the other side that doesn't support what I support are always pointing the finger at the other side. And it's it just, it's overwhelming. And, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I go back to think about <clears throat> my volunteering for the, for the fire department. I honestly want to leave the world in a better place when when I leave here and a better place for my children and grandchildren, you know, and, and when I think about, uh, the paternity court, right. We've done a thousand episodes. That's a thousand children's lives. We've changed. Wow. That's a lot. Now, and, and it's all real. Is it for the better? This show, I, I, I the children's lives you're changing. Is it a thousand of Amen. children? Who, who wouldn't want better? to know who their biological child okay. or biological yeah. father is right. or get a chance to reach out? <clears throat> I mean, every human being deserves to know who their biological well, parents I, are. I could just see some scenario though, where, you know, the child finds out and that parent decides they don't want to be a part. Well, and, it happens all the time. A, and then that's, you know, was, would the child have been, it's a slippery slope. It, it, would they have been better off not knowing? But what if, what if, on the father's side that you just now found out your father, there's some massive health issues that you should be yeah. warned about for yourself and your own children. Right. Right. Or I mean, you need to know, <laughs> you know, great, uh, good parents and the kid now has better grandparents because of it. Yeah, right. right. He's a shitty dad. Or, or yeah, a relative. Got, yeah. Yes. I mean, there's a whole, so, yeah. there, on the father's side, there's a whole nother family. Yeah. I mean, so is that show, uh, when is, when's the next, are you, are you currently filming? No. When does that go back in? I don't know. Wait until oh. the COVID. Wow, so yeah, we yeah. haven't yet just been known for this yeah, whole year? Be rough, oh, too. Yeah. yeah. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> you having a good time hanging out? Yeah. The Hamilton. What do you call your, your play? I love it in Facebook. You always say you're hanging out at your... Uh, which place? The River House? Or the, the River House. Um, what do I call that? My, my waterfront. I don't remember, honestly. Oh, it, it's it online. Pr- you know what? Nick, take over. I'm going to find out. All right. So... Yeah, I've known you for like two or three years. Right. I've always wanted to do this. Oh, I wanted I to sit down. I wanted to pick your brain, get some more history of Jerome, yeah, and find out. And this is awesome. We finally Thank got the you. chance to well, do I mean, it. Like I said, it's an honor for me to be here. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty. I don't know. I shouldn't be here. I'm not worthy of it, to be honest with you. But I, oh, dude, I mean, I, I am a dad. Yeah. Yeah. just like you said, man. I'm just a guy. We're just, just a guy. we're just a dude who's yeah. a dad who <laughs> likes to play in radio with microphones. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And I like to learn interesting things about interesting people. Yeah. And honestly, you're one of the most interesting guys I know. I need that commercial to spring Dos Equis back, and I'll be the mid- most you interesting just, man yes. in the world. Got to grow a goatee, man. Oh, I can grow, grow that one, beard. It, it turns out white. That's the problem. <laughs> it's kind of sexy, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a George Clooney-ish. Yeah, you're right. I, I mean, I get a lot of. 
I don't know. I'm just used to having a clean <laughs> face, but I would. It's a lot easier to have a beard. It is because I don't That's, like shaving. It, yeah, but I don't have. Yeah. I mean, I don't have whiskers that much, so <laughs> I don't. Sh- you know, shave every every other day. That's about it. But yeah. um, you know, it's a Nick. It's great to be here, and you know, I have a lot of respect for the dad you are, and 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 the mother, the the, the 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 mother your wife is, and your kids are amazing, and and you know, you're a true inspiration because you hustle. That's, That's how right, we man. get it done, bro. Yeah. Like, you can't, nothing's going to get handed to you. You got I want my kids to know you if have you to work your ass off for it. you want something, go work your ass yeah. off for it. I didn't have anything handed to me. Yeah. I mean, I went from from living in a car to owning a very large mansion, mm-hmm. 8,000 square foot mansion Damn. in the hills, you know. Yeah. And every time I'd walk in there, I'd go, and I bought that mansion when I was, I believe I was 35, and that was probably my 10th home I'd bought by then. Mm-hmm. And it was in a gated community on a golf course in California. You know, that was big bucks. But every time I'd walk into this house, when I bought the house, it was a uh, it was kind of a pre foreclosure. Mm-hmm. A doctor and a builder had built it for spec, and then the market crashed, and they were going to lose it. And um, so I, I think about that. Here's this kid that didn't do didn't even graduate high school that lived in this car that's now buying this from a doctor and a, <laughs> and a builder. You know, right. and it was it was pretty cool. So mm-hmm. you walk into a place like that, it's hard to to understand that it's yours. Yeah. It was really weird. I mean, because I walk in the front, and this thing was a palace. I mean, 500 grand just in moldings in the inside of the house. Wow. It was done. And Damn. that was your first house, you say? That was my first. That was uh, my, my, that was a, a, a big house that I owned. Can I ask? It's personal? Yeah. No I, what, how did you earn the money to buy that house? Was that, was that a, pro, a movie, TV show at that well, point in time? Or? No. What I, what I found that I loved to do as a young child was work with my hands. Okay. So I have very, I'm very mechanically inclined. Mm-hmm. Uh, as a as a little boy, um, I used to tear apart bicycles, and all the neighborhood would bring me their old bicycles, and I'd sell the parts. So I was kind of an entrepreneur at very young. I sold my first car as nine years old. <laughs> I wow. love that. <laughs> True story. Tripled my money. Nice. Yeah, got it for a hundred, sold for three hundred the next day, and uh, so the car business is what I did. I ended up owning an auto auction, and you know I did did pretty darn well. I bought a lot mm-hmm. of real estate back in the day. You know, but a couple of divorces later, and you don't have all that anymore. Yeah. You know? Thankfully, so. I've never joined that club. Yeah, don't. Yeah, well, actually, the one one <laughs> divorce wiped me out. So I haven't even been married. Yeah. Well, that's good. We'll do yeah. that. Well, yeah, okay. Definitely. You know, and I know my lady's listening. <laughs> well, I like being married. I like. I love and Jen, to be married. You are. You're awesome. So yeah, yeah. you're an awesome guy, man. Yeah. <laughs> She's awesome. Uh, She's more awesome. JP's than me. all right. <laughs> oh, 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 your wife's awesome too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they, well, call her your wife because you're married. Yeah, but I know. Yeah, but she still went. And she walked. Remember, she walked out yes. the room last week. We, yeah, better put a ring on it. Yeah. Well, put a ring on it then. We'll get there. We'll get there. You want me to propose for you? Yeah, uh, you, you never we'll know. Do, we'll do it live on air. Can we put it on the Emmy. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I have a lot to be thankful for, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. Nick <laughs> Nick Watt still is afraid of those head. He's afraid of those headphones, Jerome. I feel like I'm yelling at you guys when I have the headphones on. I don't know how loud I'm talking, so it's well. It, it, I'd rather have them than not. Yeah, you got it in this industry. Yeah. It it literally this is yelling. You'll know. Okay, I'm not yelling. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man. So so car business, and it's funny. I, have I told the story about my my flip? On the um, show yet? I think we did back last season. Just a little bit, though. A little bit. But you've done a lot since yeah. then. I got bored during last year during COVID, and uh, we got our first stimulus check. Uh-huh. And I didn't need it. You know, I was one of those guys like, I, <laughs> shit's nice, but I, I don't know, it's probably better suited somewhere else. Oh, I, hear you. I You know, I'm I'm paying the bills. I'm still working. I, I don't need this. But here it is. But you deserved it. <laughs> sure. I don't even know if that's the case, you know. And I don't, I, I never feel like I... I'm one of those type that hey, deserves anything. Listen, bro, you've contributed to, you've contributed to the to the health of the nation and in yeah. your own way. So of course you earned it and you deserved it. All right. So I deserved it. Yes. But I had to figure out what to do with it. And I had no intention of doing what I did, but long story short, I bought a nineteen ninety four Mustang GT for eight hundred dollars. Yeah. Flipped it for like thirty five hundred. Perfect. And over the course of two months, I turned that eight hundred dollars into ten grand cash. Over flipping like five cars in two months. You had some badass cars too. Oh yeah, I, I had I had a Beamer, I had a Porsche, I had a Vet, I had a truck. I, oh, yeah. I had, and and it was so easy. But if then I, I found out it's illegal to I, do more than five. Right. If I told you how I got into the car business, you wouldn't believe it. Okay. Well, that sounds like a good segue. 
You want me to get into it? How'd I you, do. How'd you, how'd so you I do used it? to I used to play pool a lot, uh-huh. and I used to play nine ball a lot, and you know, I used to gamble playing pool. I was never any good. I was better than the average player, but not as good as the good guys. <laughs> All right. So there was a game that was called three ball, and you put three balls on the table, and the person to make the three balls in, you play against one other guy. The person to make the balls in in the lowest amount of shots wins. Right. Pretty simple game. Um, the break, uh, the the break counts as your when you break the balls. That counts as your first shot. So, <clears throat> I'm playing this guy, and every time you you tie, you make them both into the same same number. Mm-hmm. The, the the pot doubles. So I was playing this guy two hundred dollars a a game. It got up to oh where were we? I believe fourteen hundred dollars. My fourteen hundred cash or his pickup truck. Okay. He gets up and he shoots and he makes two balls and shoots. <laughs> Shoots the second ball and he's got a two, which is what's going to be the two. Right. You got to break them all in, which yeah. never happens. Right. Well, guess what? You broke them all in. Broke them all in. I'll never forget. We were playing in a bar. Right. I'll never forget the sound that guy just about choked on his beer watching <laughs> me do it. I, I ended up getting his uh, uh, pickup truck from him, in which I sold to somebody, I believe, for like 2800 and then I took the 2800 and I believe I turned it into some jewelry of all things and sold the jewelry for a profit. So really, I made millions of dollars in the car business. I don't have any more, but I did. And that all started from that silly little hmm, pool game. From that pool game. That's, that's a good story, man. Yeah, that's why that's I love story. this dad cast. Exactly. I don't know if you're ever going to get to that story anywhere else. You know, it's pretty unusual. And... Um, there again, if you find something in life that you enjoy doing that you get paid for, it's not really work. Man. Exactly. And I love cars. That's my thing. I have 50 cars in my collection. <laughs> yeah, what's your favorite? Mm. Right now. I know I know that's one of those difficult, probably impossible questions because each of them is your favorite. They really you are. You wouldn't have it if they weren't. But if you had to choose one, they all, there's a horrible earthquake and only one's left standing. Which one is it? Man, I don't know. I like my Bentley. I okay. mean, as far as a driving car, it right. drives really good. Yeah, but Bentley's I've got so many sure. cars, <laughs> you know, uh. and uh, it's hard to say. I like classic cars a lot. That's my, my big thing is that's what I have, a classic car collection. Yeah. And, you know, I've got several other late model ones. As far as my favorite car, I have a 49 Dodge Wayfair Roadster. Yeah. 1949. It's a pretty rare car. It's a convertible Roadster. I love that car. There you go. There's the answer. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's not you, my most expensive car. What's your it's fastest just, car? Well, the Bentley is a V12 twin turbo, so it goes pretty quick. Oh, look at this. I didn't put my, my car. My, <laughs> yeah, we're going to go and put that on silent. Um, fast cars. So I want a Tesla. They're great yes. cars, and they're fast. I yes. want a Tesla. Yeah. I'm going to do anything in my power to get a Tesla before the end of this year. Me too, actually. Legally. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> It, we can use each other's referrals for free supercharging miles, but like uh, there's no, I, I, I'm realist here. There's no way I'm going to be able to afford the Model S Plaid Plus, which I just found out last night. Zero to sixty, one point eight. That's insane, yeah. man. One, it's the fastest production vehicle ever mm-hmm. made. There is not a vehicle on the planet that is faster than that car. Right, one hundred twenty-five grand. Yeah. Well, so you know, my, that's not a bad price. No, actually. it's not. It's when you think about it, you know. Right. So <laughs> my sister just bought one, about thirty grand. Which one? Model just three, the, the model three, the uh-huh. base model. It's and it's nice. It's it's a really nice Tesla, and it's still fast as it's all hell. Fucking fast as <laughs> shit, dude. It's the <laughs> scariest fucker I've ever been. <laughs> Zero to six. I don't know how fast we got going. But well, if it's it, the it standard was, range plus, it's like five one. Yeah, which was, is still it's it's faster than my Hyundai. Yep. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> And I paid about the same for my Hyundai. I'm a little pissed. I'm like, oh, what the hell yeah. was I doing? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. leather interior. Yeah. Very nice car. Thirty grand. And you get a ten thousand dollar tax break. That's right. crazy. That's good. So yeah. well so I'm doing Yeah, it. Oregon's got it. And then actually the federal one they're talking about uh which is a good thing about this administration, if they're if you want to go that route. Um, they're re implementing the federal uh, refund really on because uh, Tesla once they sold a certain amount of cars yeah you didn't get it anymore they're gonna give them like another two hundred thousand oh, right. shit. so if you buy a car if it gets and it's looking like it's going to if they mm-hmm. implement that again and you buy it it has to be new okay um you buy a new Tesla you get uh seventy five hundred back from federal and then you can also get up to five grand back off two different ones in Oregon mm-hmm. so you're looking at twelve and a half grand back right there on a forty thousand dollar car you're right. now 
right there with a Honda Accord and exactly. a new Camry. Yeah. And you know why um, the current administration brought that back, right? Why? Because all his administration drives is Teslas. Yeah. I'm kidding. That was supposed to be a joke. I don't know. Oh, oh, it was it? Yeah, it was a little laughing. Yeah. Oh, well, you know. Let's start pushing buttons. That's good, yeah. Yeah. Or exactly, crickets. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I'm just kidding. It was hilarious. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, so cars, politics. Wow, yeah. This has actually been the most adult podcast we've done so far, I think. I, you know, we've, yeah. we've had a Bigfoot encounter. With one of our guests. Yes, we have. Possibly could have been a bear. We were drinking whiskey last week. You know, whiz, speaking whiskey. of yeah. drinking, I have yet to uh, tap into our amazing sponsors, Boneyard Elixirs, Grape Soda, CBD-infused sparkling beverage. Thank you, guys. As always, I am going to do it Well, you right do here. that. I'm going to thank the other sponsors, JL Insurance, LLC. Mm -mm. Hit them up on Facebook. They do all of your insurance needs, home, auto, life. I'm sure there's some other stuff they do, but hit them up. Uh, Happy Dragon Mongolian Barbecue, downtown oh, yeah. Medford. So good. Best service I've ever had at a restaurant locally here. The owners are amazing. And I like I like Diane. stuffing my bowl. Yes. Ten times larger than uh, I could fit <laughs> into that bowl. Yes. And taking home the leftovers. Oh. And then I douse it with peanut sauce. I do, oh, the, so I do good. the same thing. And, and, you know, that food's always really fresh. Yep. And yeah. it's cooked right there for you. Oh, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah, and like yeah, the new owners, awesome people. Yes, very super good people. super nice. Um, Anchor Valley Wine, Joe Moxley, Bill Powell. Thank you guys. Right on. Yeah, they were our guests last week. That was fun. Joe brought whiskey. I've been known to drink a little of that. <laughs> I, I feel stupid. I stopped drinking. Like this. Is Don't feel stupid. Well, Never ever feel stupid. I, I you know that's drink. a good oh, yeah. choice, man. It, yeah. It's you didn't quit because you had a problem. No, you I, quit because because I just wanted to. I, I, just, I did the I'm, same thing. I quit for several months, but just recently started having a few again at yeah. night just to relax. As we got things more organized in the fire department, it's not so mandatory that I actually respond because we've brought in more more mm -hmm. volunteers and good quality volunteers, and we give them all the training. So if anybody would like to join a really good volunteer fire department uh, out in Wolf Creek, uh, you, you could respond to calls from your house. Uh, we could use the help, to be honest with you. And it's very professional and uh, – very, very rewarding. So I quit drinking so so I could respond because I would never drive and drink. Oh, yeah. And, and so at nights I would have a little, you know, I'm getting older, have a, have a little hot toddy or whatever and yes, then go, sir. go to bed, you know. And uh, now when you're on call all this time, you're going to get woke up all night long. Right. And you got to be able to respond. And I felt guilty that if I was inebriated and couldn't respond to a call because of that, and somebody needed me to help save their life, how selfish would that be? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I did the same thing. I, I'm, I'm like Nick. I could just quit, you know, and I can mm -hmm. quit. I, I I don't drink that often these days. I, and, again, there's no real good explanation. I think my lady would tell you uh, these days I, I drink half a beer and I have a hangover. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I think that's the age thing. Yeah. Whereas before I didn't. I just think it's because I'm out of practice. And, again, I, 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 I think it was the evolution of – my personal experience as a dad because uh -huh. when i became a dad you know that was still you know i was out more nights a week than i was in right and that is completely 180 degree shift mm -hmm. um and now it's the point where whoa i haven't gone out since november yeah, yeah. you know what I, and i think a lot of it for me was covid like honestly because you know doing the concerts and stuff you're right. out you're promoting these concerts. Fantastic job, by the way, Nate. Thank you. It was awesome, man. <laughs> you're around, you're drinking, and just having a hell of a time. Yeah. And looking back, it's like, fuck, I don't remember a lot of what happened at those concerts, or was I an asshole to that person? You so, know, you were always a, really, a really, I can tell you, because I was at most of them, <laughs> you were always really pleasant and good with people. That's well, all you. I can that's, say. That's so, and I never good even, to know. <laughs> I, I never would have known you were drinking. Wow. So I, was, I, I didn't, honestly. That's probably because I was drinking too much. No, just kidding. I didn't. He was because you were an asshole. Yeah, you, was he an asshole? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, honestly, he was always really cool to me. He's always been cool to me. Both of you guys have. So, you know. So, yeah. So, I mean, for me, it was just more of a conscious decision of I want to remember. I want my kids to see yeah. how hard I work. And I don't, they're, they are getting older, too, my kids. So I don't want them to think, hey, it's cool to go get drunk. And they're, they're very impressionable. Kind of thing, so. Man. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I want my kids to, you know, my dad's responsible. And, right. you know, he's doing a good thing and you're the roadmap for so, them dude yeah so exactly. you did mention uh, a couple weeks ago that you would have a drink with me but what was that for do you remember 
you said I, you know, but if you do that, I'm definitely gonna have a drink with you or something along those lines. I want to hold you to it. I'll drink if to you that. want to. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm not saying I'm not ever gonna drink again. I know, I, just, I, know, you know, I know. I'll have like. Maybe a half a beer, something, you know, just a little small glass of whiskey or something, but nothing crazy. Anybody here smoke cigars? Yes. Uh, not recently. Okay, so let's do a podcast from my deck on the river Ooh. and have cigars and a couple drinks. He can't drink, but I'm in. Well, we'll drink his. Don't worry, JP. We can, we can drink his. I'll, okay. I'll, let's I'll do that on it. right on the yeah. water. I mean, I like it. The, it'd be fun. And, yeah. You know, it's kind of beautiful there. Okay. Uh, Jerome Hamilton, episode two. It would be a lot. The, of, the return. Lot of, it would just kind of be a lot of fun. It would be yeah. even more fun in the summer when people are rafting by and stuff. That's what I'm thinking. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, it's kind of killer. Nice. And I like we it. should think about that in the future. No, we, there's no thinking done. It's already okay. set. Done. It's going to happen uh, the weekend of ju- the July 4th weekend. Right yeah. on. We Not meet. July 4th, but whatever weekend comes yeah. before or after. Actually, I have an idea. Um, ben Carey uh-huh. and Brian Hopkins right, are going right. to be up in August. Why don't we do it in August? Uh, oh, have them perfect, on your deck, man. and we'll do a little acoustic. Perfect. Yeah, that works really well. That would be yeah. awesome. So, yeah. A couple Because, yeah, guys, Ben man. wants to be on, and Brian, they're yeah. both parents. So, yeah. yeah. I love those guys, man. They're I got to lose some weight. Good guys. You need to take your shirt off and jump in the river? Yes, and it's going to be on camera. Dope. <laughs> <laughs> I got to do the Jerome Hamilton plan. Well, this new GoPro. Ripped, gigantic I, shoulders exactly. and chest, and it doesn't even work out, and the man's 60 years old. I'm just blessed, I guess. You know, I got lucky. All right. <laughs> well, I used to look like that. Okay, not that. I was that thin back in the day. Well, I'm down like, um, I think I'm down to 240. I usually weigh about 270. Yeah. 270 ripped. Right. And, you yeah. know, right now I'm pretty thin for me. Well, I I weigh more than you, and I'm a foot shorter. I weigh more than you too, (laughs) (laughs) and I'm like three feet shorter. You know what's funny (laughs) is my 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 youngest son, super handsome guy, and he's 37 now. He's a male model. He's he's done very very well. He's he's a great dad, and uh, to me, he looks bigger than me, but I outweigh him by 40 pounds. Hmm. Don't I hope he doesn't see that because he always likes to say he's bigger than me, but. (laughs) I outweigh him by 40 pounds. So it's just your own your perception, I guess. Sometimes. Yeah. You don't yeah. look bad. You guys both look awesome, man. <laughs> you should see the shirt off. No, yeah, again, <laughs> it is literally, you know, the you know, the eye of the beholder. I mean, in my you know, case, I make my living in front of a camera. Yeah. So I have to kind of stay fairly good shape. Right. Fortunately, I'm lucky enough. I guess I don't have to work at it as hard as a lot of people. That's all I can say. I uh, yeah, I need uh, to but get. I would to, if I had to. If I got to that point where I got to the point where I liked what I saw in the mirror, mm-hmm. maintaining would be probably pretty easy. Mm-hmm. I thought I would think for me because if I put in all that work to get there, keeping it up is going to be no problem. It's all about discipline. It yeah, is. It, it, I you know, know what? it is. It all starts in the kitchen, man. I'll tell you what, man. How about you start getting up at two a.m. with me? We'll hit the gym together. I'll come to Medford once in a while. You come to Grants Pass. You do realize I have like four jobs. And I have to produce this whole show for you, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it, gym time's no, like, no. I like what it, you're coming at. Time. Um, you know, for me, it's just someone to hold myself. You know, I can hold myself accountable, but mm-hmm. I can also not. Right. If I got that one person, you know, you don't necessarily have to be together. But in two a.m., first of all, hell no. Well, maybe I like hanging out with you. Uh, four, four or five a.m. <laughs> I'm cool with. I'm up almost that early anyway. You know, 5 a.m. is a good number. There's a big yeah. difference in up at 4 or 5 a.m. Yeah. and out the door at 4 a.m. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm not talk- talking rolling out of bed at 5 a.m. I mean, when that 5 a.m. hits, it's like Rocky Balboa and his gray sweats yeah. and drinking those raw <laughs> eggs and out running. It's ready to do work yeah. at 5 a.m. And, and you know I, I can do that. You know See? what happens is is if you get into that routine, if you don't do it, you're going to miss it. Right. Yep. It's hard to get into it and get the mindset to do it, but once you do it and you realize how good you feel about the exercise you're getting, you crave it. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of like, like sex, cheating man. on myself. You know, yeah. you always go back for more. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I'm cheating on myself if I don't get out of bed at 2 a.m. Yes. and hit the gym for an hour. And what half. time do you go to bed at night, though? Um, like 8 39. And then so, I, I sleep for a few hours, get up. I don't want to miss any time with the baby, and yeah. I don't want to take away family time. So I kind of I pick and choose yeah, my but, personal know, five hours of sleep. That's, uh, I don't well, know. I, I that would go, catch up to I me. I get back at home at 4 or 30, sleep for another hour and a half before I have to go to work. That's nice. Get up with the baby and. You know, start the day that way. I put a little gym so, in my house in Grants Pass because Club Northwest is never open. Right. So because of COVID. And Again. I was like, well, I keep paying for the last 15 years of these guys and I don't go. So they don't. They didn't like stop deducting my money right. every month out of my account. 
So I put a gym in my house, and yeah. I've yet to use it, but it's there. <laughs> yeah, I've got, I, I did there. the same thing. As soon as COVID hit and they shut the gyms down, I went and bought a bunch of gym equipment yeah. and set up a whole room in the house. That's what I did. Yeah. I had the plan to do that in my garage as well. I even bought the, the floor padding, uh huh. you know, to make it look cool. Yeah. And, and, and a bike, and I haven't done it yet. Well, get in there and do it, you know, yeah. and take baby steps. Exactly. I know. Got to clean the garage first. That's step one. As yeah. far as getting fit, it honestly all starts in the kitchen. Yeah, it's all about diet. You know, and I'm not talking about going on a diet. I'm talking about just eat right. The diet, yeah. 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 It's what you eat. Mm-hmm. Less of it and yes. make sure what you are eating is good for you. Yeah. Right. It's it's pretty simple. Yes. But it isn't. Right. That's the thing. It's it, it all up in here, man. But enough about my fat ass. Jeez. We're talking about God. my fat ass. Too. Oh. <laughs> Okay, I'm glad I didn't say what I was about to say because I was going to take us right back to the first ten seconds of the show, and then I would have been playing. But I'm, I'm no, I'm not. <laughs> Don't do it, man. <laughs> do not do it. So, okay, let's get back to J- Jerome. Okay, it's not about us. We're just the stupid hosts. That's right. Jerome, movie star, normal guy. Oh he like God. I love it. See, that's he, I was setting you up. Hold on, I got to know. I went movie did, star. And he, he immediately went uh, like, do just shut up, man. I did. Did you get to hang out with Ryan Reynolds on Safe House? I did not. Oh man, I want to know. If I he's mean, a, I have been. I, I want to know if he's. Dude, as I have awesome worked with pretty seems. much everybody. Yeah. Do you have a problem calling out any movie star you've worked with? If I if I asked you a certain individual was an asshole, would you hold I, off I on would that tell answer? You. No, I would tell you. You would? Oh yeah. Well, let's go. Who's well, the I, biggest I, asshole you've worked with? <laughs> Roseanne Barr. <laughs> why does really? that not surprise <laughs> That's me? That's awesome. Can so, you tell us why? Well, I could tell you why. It's pretty. So before before Obama got elected, yeah, <clears throat> she had announced she was also going to run for president. I remember that. Mm-hmm. So they did the Comedy Central roast of Roseanne, mm-hmm. and they hired me to be her Secret Service agent to bring her up on the dais and walk her up there because we had like I was her main Secret Service agent. So she had announced she's running for president. And she carried these flags, and the thing is, is she's from what I understand a germaphobe, and she had a sleeveless shirt on. And I was in a you know nice suit, and I was to grab her around her arm, and I know she doesn't like skin on skin, right? So I was to grab her around her arm and walk her up, and uh, I decided, well, you know what? I got a long sleeve. I want you to grab my arm, and I'm stand, I'm sitting there, I'm, I'm standing there in a group closer than you, all of us are right here, and I told her that. I said, you know what? If if it's better for you, I don't have a problem you just grabbing my arm and us walking up, and she just stared at me. And I was like, looked at the, I looked at the other guys there. I said, did that just come out of my mouth or am I, did I dream that? <laughs> right. Oh, no, you said it. That's what they said. You said it. Well, <clears throat> she never did answer me and never did say one word to me the whole time we worked together. And it was really weird. I found it very weird. And I, I asked the assistant director, I said, man, go tell her that if she wants to grab my arm, I'm good with it. Well, tell her. That's he says, well, tell her. And I said, well, I did. And he said, well, what'd she say? I said, nothing. I said, that is the weirdest. She wasn't a, a prick to me or anything, but she was She was just like, it was almost like that look like you're talking to me. Yeah. And no, I, I don't I mean. don't play that game. Don't make me like I'm beneath you. Oh, right. But please don't make me like I'm a b- better than you either. So we're all just freaking people, man. And I didn't dig that. And it really rubbed me the wrong way. Um, one of the nicest people I ever worked with. There he goes. That was, that was my next question. question. Yep. <laughs> Henry Winkler. Oh, yeah. The Fonz, oh, yeah. man. That's the shit, man. He's, He's nice. shit. I worked on uh, Parks and Rec with him and everybody else that was on Parks and Rec. And he, uh, we sat down and had lunch together one day. And all we did was, he's an avid fisherman. He flies to foreign destinations to fish for freshwater fish. <laughs> and he just showed me every f- picture in his phone of his fish. And then we oh, talked wow. fish. He was a super, super cool guy. And honestly, people say that, like, Chevy Chase is an asshole to work with. I've, I've read that again. Guess what? I yeah. worked with him two weeks. Yeah. I did a scene with him in a small room like this. He stood up and thanked me for working with him. That made me feel good because he was really easy to work with. Nice. Dan Aykroyd, people that I grew up, my, the people I grew up, you know, liking, idolizing. Yeah. Uh-huh. Super nice guy. It's just, uh, it's just amazing how, 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 how untrue a lot of the stories are about people. But I will tell anybody that if he's nice or if he's an ass, I'll tell you, he's a, you know, mm. either way. Have you ever worked with Bill Murray? Joel Murray, his brother, I've worked with a few times. Hmm. Uh, not Bill. I was actually by Joel, uh, his brother. <clears throat> I was actually uh, invited to go golfing. Pop, like I think oh. we were going to do Pebble Beach. Right. Me, Joel, Bear, uh, um, Bill. It never happened. But uh, I think I think he's probably a really cool guy because Joel's a really cool guy. Yeah. I mean, I've 
the stories I've seen, yeah. the videos I've lo- watched, I, I think Bill Murray's the man. I would, uh, Bill, if this ever gets to you, somehow, some way, we want to do the dad cast with you. Yeah, exactly. we want to shoot golf balls into gopher holes. I'm going yes. to jump back to <laughs> Mr. Aykroyd, though. If, uh, okay. If you're uh, watching Dan this. Dan Aykroyd was awesome. Yeah, man. I know you hang out in the valley, Mr. Aykroyd. Oh, does he? Yeah, he's oh, partners with Jim Belushi. Oh, I've seen Jim. I talked to Jim farm. at the airport. I didn't know they were partners. Well, Mr. Belushi, I'd like you to be on the podcast as well. So Yeah, Jim's a nice yeah. guy. Real, real nice guy. They're, yeah. You know no, what? We, they're just, like I said, if they're not nice, I'll tell yeah. you. So Jim is like one of my favorite movies, Mr. Destiny. Yeah, never, never <laughs> one of the, the greatest movies of all time. I've never seen it. You should watch it. I don't it's watch kinda, a lot of movies. And, you know, um, honestly, the funny part with me is that I have worked with so many people that are real famous and I have no clue who they are. Hmm. I mean, I could be Stan. I remember one time I was doing a movie, The Incredible Burt Wonderstone with um, Jim Carrey. Of course, you know who that yeah. is. Um, there were so many actors in that. Um, that's where I got to be friendly with James Gandolfini before he passed. Oh, wow. And <laughs> I was standing at a at the uh, the craft area uh-huh. where they you know, they give you free food. And I'm like talking to this beautiful lady. I'm the beautiful chick. And we're talking and talking. I get up and walk away. Guy comes up and he goes, holy crap, man. How was it talking to Olivia Wilde? I'm like, who's that? <laughs> I never knew who it was. <laughs> good looking lady. You ain't kidding. Good, good yeah, looking very woman. Good looking lady. Uh, she was <laughs> super nice to me. And I was like, huh. I, I like that about myself because I don't treat these people special. Right. And I really didn't know who she was. And I, I don't know who most of them are. I mean, like a Dan Aykroyd, of course I do. Mm-hmm. Chevy Chase, of course I do. Ryan Reynolds, I would know who he is now. Right. Uh, but there's a lot of people that I don't have a clue. Hmm. And, and I, you know, maybe that's what they like about me because I don't treat them special. I don't know. Mm-hmm. So. Nick Martin. Yes. On that th- frame of questions there who's the biggest asshole you've ever worked with hmm that's actually going to be the singer from creed <laughs> Scott Stapp. Was i was kidding i thought you were going to answer me that was i was literally setting you're, you up to second. knock me down. there it is there it is i was waiting for you to call him out no but <laughs> yeah no no he was uh mr uh yeah mr Stapp was in the valley on a tour and i got the the lucky short straw <laughs> drawn to hang out with the guy and he was an asshole. He was the biggest dick I've ever met in my life. Um, wow. Yeah. That's interesting. So, Jared Leto for me. Yeah. Yes. He was the second one. I went to the 30 Seconds to Mars show. He was a dick to everybody at that like concert. He looked like a prick yesterday when he didn't win the Golden Globe or somebody won it and he didn't get it. It was like televised thing. Right. I yeah. just happened to see it on the news, catch him being in the frame because they had everybody that was up for the award and then they announced the winner and he just looked like he, he couldn't believe he didn't get it. So he looked kind of like when a prick. You, yeah. When you, uh, I want to keep a photograph of him in Fight Club after he got his ass kicked yes. with me on hand. So if and when I ever do get to see him again... I'll be like, oh my god, can you sign this for me? Yeah, and then I. <laughs> so were you back? Show him the picture. Um, did you? I mean, did you actually get to go? And, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So I was hanging out with Neon Trees and New Politics, mm-hmm. and Jared came through, and it was just a fucking dick. Like he was like, "Fuck Medford, I hate this fucking place," and really, just an asshole. Like he was like, "All the people are just trailer trash," and I'm like, "Wow, dude. Yeah. What an ungrateful son of a bitch." You know who's <laughs> super freaking cool a musician? I just have to throw this out there. So my hometown is Seal Beach, California, by mm-hmm. the ocean, on the ocean. Little small towns. I call it Mayberry by the sea. It's an amazing little town. Lots of Marines there. There is. <laughs> there, well, there's not as many Marines. There's naval there because there's a naval weapons area right there yep. in that town. And uh, once a year, Lucas Nelson, Willie Nelson's son, would come and, and play a free concert in our concert in the park. And <clears throat> basically what happened was uh, in his journey, by the way, he just won the Academy Award. He wrote the song for uh, Star is Born. So he, the guy's big mm-hmm. time, and he's a, yeah, yeah. You, you should, you should. I don't know if you're familiar with his music, and mm-hmm. he's amazing. Yeah. But just one of the nicest damn guys. He used to couch surf in in Seal Beach hmm. for four years or seven years. So he he felt obligated to come back and do these free concerts. He'd drive up in Willie's old tour bus, and he's just one of the nicest, nicest guys. A little, That's he cool. like has a little dog, you know. He's just down to earth guy and talented. Mm-hmm. Pretty amazing. So I just wanted to throw that out there. As a musician, he was cool. There you have it. Your sign sealed approval from the man, the myth himself, Jerome right. Hamilton, oh, yeah, right baby. there. Yeah. Well, we are getting near the end of our time. I, I, this one, yeah, yeah. it just kind of flew by. We may want to consider uh, upping the ante and making these episodes longer one day, but yes. we've already figured out uh, that we are going to have a part two on with you, deck. sir, <laughs> on the deck in God's country. Right on. That's what I was looking for earlier, what yeah, you always baby. post. On oh, your yeah, Facebook. I, call, I call, well, my river, I don't. 
I call it the waterfront lodge or something in, in God's country, but my house in Colonial Valley, it's the it's it's I it's God's country, Colonial Valley. There it so, is. You know, out in Grants Pass area. And um, yeah, you're right. It is God's country. You know what? I was born in Oregon, so but raised in Southern California. Hmm. And came back to Oregon later in life after I kind of retired at age oh, well, I think I kind of retired around age forty and did well in the car business, but then divorce took care of all the retirement. Oh, so right. <clears throat> However, it's okay, and uh, I like being here. But I'm a really I'm a beach guy, man. Yeah. Anytime mm-hmm. I can get back down to the coast, down to the beach in Southern California, and put my toes in yeah, the warm, I miss warm too. sand, and that's why I you know beautiful wait for next week, beautiful cars, beautiful mm-hmm. women, beautiful homes. You know, I'm not saying the people are beautiful. There's a lot of them. Are, <laughs> a lot of them are real. Oh ass, yeah, li- li- uh-huh. real assholes. But you know, for the most part, I just like the climate there. Here is is actually really amazing too. Well, Grant's Pass would tell you it's the climate. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, you want you want the you yeah. want the want 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 yeah. want? Was that not funny? <laughs> All right, put your hands together one more time for Jerome Hamilton, our guest today on Dadcast. Uh, we look forward to coming uh, or to actually going out to you. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, doing another episode with you here comes summertime. Yes, uh, we are one hundred percent out of time. Uh, we can't wait to see you back on Paternity Court as soon as right. this COVID yeah. thing's over. Well, it's still playing. Where, I mean, where yeah. can we, we actually? Where can you watch Paternity Court real quick? Well, you can watch it on television five days a week, four times a day. I don't okay. know what channel, or you can go YouTube where we have a couple million followers, and okay. YouTube has I think unedited uh, cool. episodes, the full episodes, and I guess it does. Pretty well. Uh, I want to see some outtakes of you kicking ass. That's right. You know, they always cut it out. <laughs> of course they I, would. I mean, I, I literally you, do right? have to. Huh? <laughs> they send it to you, though, right? No. What? No, I mean, I physically uh, remove somebody and uh, and it's cut out. Man. I've had, I can't even explain it. <laughs> Hold on to that yeah. thought, because we will get to that Aren't on the know, next the, episode. The, 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 the next, the ne- I just want to throw this out there. Of course. The next time we talk, I would like to bring in uh, a little bit of conversation about the Route 91 Harvest Festival. Absolutely. The, the shooting yes. that I was a survivor of. And the and the group that I created for survivors, absolutely. So. Which is, we could spend hours that on be just that topic itself. alone. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. We could, that could be like, I don't want to call it a special episode, but you know what I mean by that. I don't want to sound insensitive. And that'll be, actually be good with Ben and Brian too. They're well, they're, they're both they're there, there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It'd be awesome. That yeah. Actually, would if we talked about that a little bit together, it'd be mm-hmm. pretty intense because we all have a pretty similar feeling about it. Yeah. So yeah. Something cool. we will absolutely revisit. All right, cool. uh, one more time, put your hands together for Jerome Hamilton. Thank you for having me. Nick Martin. Nick. Thank you very much. I am JP. Uh, we will catch you all next week on another episode of Dadcast. Who do we got next week? Oh, my buddy Jeff McLean. There it is. You know, a good one. Yeah, I'm sure you'll find out on Facebook. Exactly. Because Nick loves to post on Facebook. That's right. all and day. with that. <laughs> hey, everyone. Thanks for listening to Dadcast. See you all next week. Later. Hasta la vista, baby. That was fun.